Hi everyone, and welcome to Bluebeam Review. My name is Ari, and I'm a Bluebeam Certified Instructor with Digital Drafting Systems. Today, we're going to talk about the Eraser tool and how it can be used to erase portions of the Pen and Highlighter tool. We can initially find the Eraser tool by going to the Tools dropdown, mousing over Markup, and you can see that the Eraser tool is grouped up with the Pen and Highlight tools. That's because it only works with these two tools. And basically, it's not meant to delete other markups. So we can typically delete markups by either selecting them and pressing the Delete key, or right-clicking on them and then clicking on Delete. So before we use the Eraser tool, let's use the Pen tool first. We're going to be using the Pen tool, and we're going to create different kinds of shapes and objects. The first one I'm going to make is going to be one entire segment. So I'm not going to let go of my left mouse button while I make this. I'm going to make some curves initially. Then I'm going to basically turn at different degrees. So I'm going to go at some acute and obtuse angles, basically larger or smaller than 90 degrees. So this is all one segment. We're now going to stop. And then I'm going to draw some smaller segments. I can draw them going through this object, and we're going to see how that works. And there shouldn't really be too much of a difference if you have other objects intersecting other objects, especially if it's the same tool like the pen tool. So that should be good. And let's actually make a little curve here. Perfect. And that should be perfect. So let's use the eraser tool now. And when we initially click on the eraser tool, typically the fourth option here, stroke eraser, is turned on by default. Most people don't actually know that the eraser tool has five different variants of the tool. And these variants can be found in the same location that we'll see when we click on a markup and we can change the properties of a markup. This is actually called the quick properties toolbar and it changes based on the markup that you click on. So if I click on this callout template right here, I now have access to auto size text box, which is quite useful for making sure that our text box fits around whatever text that we write. So let's go back to use the eraser tool. And instead of using the fourth option, which is the default one, let's start off with the very useful first option, which is small eraser. So small eraser is pretty self-explanatory. I can essentially erase small, teeny tiny segments with this small little box here. And I can just click on these segments as I'm doing here, or I can click and hold and erase large portions of the segment just like that. And if I make a little gap here, for example, I can always go back and fill in the gaps if I need to. So it's a quite flexible, nice tool. If you're zoomed out and you're using this very small tool, sometimes it's still We'll leave little gaps here, and that's okay. We can get rid of each one just like that. So the small eraser tool, pretty self-explanatory. The medium and large eraser tools work in the exact same way, except that they are significantly larger. So I can basically erase these portions of the lines a lot faster if I need to, just like that. And if I wanted to erase a specific portion with the large tool just like that, there it is. So a significantly larger eraser tool can be used if we need it. Now let's finally look at that fourth option. The default option when you use the eraser tool from scratch right after installing Bluebeam Review. This is called Stroke Eraser. What I'm going to do firstly before I use Stroke Eraser is I'm going to go to my Undo tool, click on the arrow dropdown, and I'm going to get rid of every single thing that I erased. That way we can have that full segment back and we can see exactly how Stroke Eraser works. So what it tries to do is, I'm actually just going to click on the first segment up here. Hold on one moment, let me just recenter myself. I'm gonna click right up here and we're gonna see how much of the line gets deleted. It looks like it got rid of the entire curve section until I basically made a straight angle and changed the direction very quickly with there. So let's undo and see how that looked one more time. Yes, the entire curve right here was deleted and then it left the rest of this segment. How about this one right here? It only got rid of that segment. So typically, it just gets rid of segments. And when they have sharp turns, it'll basically get rid of only that segment, and then it'll stop right there. Now, the obtuse and acute angles may make a difference here. So let's see what happens if I click on this one. It did get rid of that segment. It looks like I actually made a small segment here. Let's see. So it actually got rid of the small one and the large segment. Let's try this one right here. Good. It only got rid of that segment and that one. Oh. And look at that. It actually got rid of two seemingly uh, made segments. That could be because of the obtuse angle. So when the angle is larger than 90 degrees, and if there are any curves in the angle, sometimes it thinks that it's all one segment. So this tool can be a bit hit or miss when it comes to trying to delete only individual portions. If that's the case, just use the manual erasers, whether it's small, medium, or large, and you can get rid of those segments that way.
and so on. And there we go. It looks like that segment worked and that segment worked. And of course, for these segments right here, we have the same concept. Sometimes with curves, as you can see with this curved one right here, I can basically click right here and it thinks that there was a change here. It looks like there was a slight change right there. But you can also see that sometimes objects that are not deleted that, but were connected to an object that were erased, they actually change slightly. So notice this section right here. When I click right here, it basically changes the objects that were connected to it just a little bit. So you can see that some extra bumps and extra curves here were created afterwards. Let's test out this one. So it thinks that this is a different segment and this and this, etc. So this is a very interesting tool and based on how smooth your curves are, it'll either think that basically these are all different segments or that it's all one segment. So that's a very interesting tool. Let's click and hold and just get rid of all these segments just like that very quickly. Now, there's one more thing we're going to be doing. We're going to go back and undo everything that we've done. I'm going to click on more history and make sure that I get rid of just the erases, but all of them. I'm not, not going to miss a single one. There we go. We have all of our little scribbles back. And we're now going to finally use the last option right here, annotation eraser. This one is very interesting. This one is actually quite useful because it allows us to get rid of an entire single stroke, essentially. So if I click anywhere in that single large stroke that I made earlier, the whole thing is gone. Let's confirm that the whole thing is what I just got rid of. I'm going to click and I'm going to drag it so it's separate from the rest of the objects. Here is that one single stroke that I made. I'm now going to go back to my eraser tool. It leaves off in the last tool that you were using, so annotation eraser is still active. I'm going to click on this and the whole thing is gone. It's kind of like erasing an entire object. Now, here's where the tool can become actually very, very useful because I could just essentially just click on this, right click, delete, get rid of the object that way. What's the point of using the annotate eraser tool if it just does the same thing as deleting? Well, sometimes when we use the pen and highlight tools, we're going to be creating segments, but they're all separate, but they're made very quickly one after the other. So if I take a lot of time in between segments, I believe about five seconds, seconds is the amount of time needed to basically separate segments as objects from each other, then you're going to see what happens right now. I'm going to quickly draw some segments really quickly, and then I'm going to stop press the escape key. I'm going to click on one of them. This is now all one object right here. So I have a few options. I can manually erase portions of this. I can delete the whole thing by right clicking and deleting or pressing the delete key while it's selected. But even better, now I can see the potential use of the annotate eraser option because now I can essentially get rid of each individual segment that I made. That's what this tool is really made for. And now this is all just one object instead of multiple segments being one object. So that's where that variation of the eraser tool, the annotation eraser, is quite useful. Now let's look at the highlighter tool and see how the highlighter tool differs from the pen tool just a little bit. Let's find our highlighter tool right here with our shortcuts. And we're going to be working in this lower area this time. We're going to be making some similar segments to the pen tool. And let's see if there's any differences when we use the eraser tool. So I'll make one rather large stroke going even through itself a little bit, and then some jagged changes in angle, obtuse, acute, et cetera, et cetera. And that should be good enough for our large segment. Let's make a small one here, one going through there. And then let's make some very salt segments really quickly, one after the other. And then you can see that after about three seconds or less, it seems like the highlights refresh themselves because they were very blurry initially when I made them. And then they clear up and refresh themselves and they all become one object. So now this is its own object and this is its own markup all together grouped up. Even though it's not actually a group, we can see it's just a highlight with different segments instead of one connected segment. Now let's use the eraser tool. So just like before, when we use the small, medium, and large erasers, we can erase portions of the tool. What's interesting is that the small tool will initially get rid of the smallest thing segment possible, but the width of the tool is respected, meaning that we're not going to just get rid of the inside of the highlight, as you would think with this really small one. We get rid of the entire segment based on the size of the small rect uh, uh, rectangle or square, and you can see that it goes a little bit, it's a little bit generous, it goes a little bit past the square. So. Medium is going to be doing something similar, but it is relatively the same. It looks like it actually matches the exact edges of that square when we just click on a segment. So that's a little bit more accurate right there. And the large one, of course, is going to get rid of 
the entire thing right up to the nearest edge. So you can see the upper right corner and the lower left corner of this square is basically where the highlights stop right there and there. So very interesting. And of course, we can just continue and get rid of multiple segments just like this. So quite convenient, quite nice. So we understand how that works. Now let's undo everything that we've done, except for, of course, creating those highlights. So we're going to do that. Perfect. And let us now switch to the stroke eraser. Let's see how this one works with the single large segment. So we're going to see what happens if we just click right here. It gets rid of everything up to here. So basically, the entire curvy section seems to be one segment, according to Bluebeam Review. And then it basically stops right here. So we can click on this side, and the same thing happens. This is a single segment. This is a segment. But wait a second. It looks like this angle is a bit acute, so it looks like it counts that as all one segment. And perhaps I curved it a little bit right here. So here, I basically kind of went up and made more of a cone shape here. So we can see how that differs. This one, yep, all one segment. Even though it was an obtuse angle this time, the curve here, I think, makes Bluebeam Review think that this is all just one segment. There, there, and there. And so that basically seems to work very similarly to the pen tool with a few nuances. Let's get rid of all of our erases that we've done. And we'll go back to having all of our objects back. Very good. Now let's use our annotation eraser. And of course, we can just click once, get rid of the entire single segment. As we saw earlier with the pen tool, it's much more useful to use this on multiple segments that were drawn very quickly one after the other. So now I can get rid of each individual segment that is part of one markup. And now the markup is changed completely. So this markup down here that is all grouped up, we're going to do that one more time. We're going to see that I can just get rid of certain parts of it. And now the markups box around it changes to reflect how large the remaining highlights are inside the box. So that's essentially how that annotation eraser is used. It's quite useful, like I said, for multiple segments that are part of one highlight tool. And that is it. That is how the eraser tool interacts with the highlight and pen tools and how we can use it to get rid of individual segments of those tools. Thanks very much for watching our tutorial on the eraser tool and how it interacts with the pen and highlighter tools. Once again, my name is Ari and I'm with Digital Drafting Systems. Hope you have a great rest of your day.